Hello and welcome. My guest today is 27 years old and has been traveling around the world since 2007. He has visited 93 countries already and plans to visit every country on earth. He believes that his travels will bring more understanding across the globe. Welcome, Ahmed. Welcome. You're out to set a record of sorts. You want to be uh, the first human to have traveled to all countries on Earth. Is it uh, the motivating factor for you to set these records? For sure. You know, being just in every country in the world, this is my mission. But not just like being in every country in the world. I want to spread my message, which is freedom, happiness and peace. One word united without racism, one word united without any borders. This is the message, you know, bec you know, because I believe that just traveling or doing anything without a message and without something that you believe in, is, you know, won't be like this uh, great thing you're doing, you know. So I have to spread my message in every country and every single street I'm going and walking in in every country in the world. This is the mission and this is what I'm willing to die for it in my travel. You've already been to 93 countries, yeah. but let's look at the records first. What are the records you want to set? Because you already have... Uh, one in mind of yeah. traveling to all countries on earth. I want to be the first human to raise his country flag in every country in the world, promoting his country and promoting humanity in every country in the world. This is something that's never been done by any nationality in, from zillion years ago in history. It's never been done, so it's totally new. And I believe, you know, why I'm doing this? Because I believe that Egypt is the first civilization ever in the world. So this is the main thing I'm trying to do to make something truly Egyptian, to you know, begin something for humanity from the beginning again. That you know, Egypt become make an infrastructure for this message all over the globe again. You know, this is something I think it's really. I'm really proud that you know, like I'm doing something like this. You're about halfway there. You've done 93 countries, and you have about a hundred more to go. Um, you've been at it since 2007. Uh, when do you think you will complete your task? I've been traveling from 2007 till this moment I'm here in India and I'm very very glad that I'm here in India because you know it was a passion from long years ago even when I wrote my dream list which I wrote it from you know when I was 14 I can show it to you also uh, it have one of the, the dreams is to come to do something in India you know this is the thing you know like I'm so that's that's your dream list from years ago when you were 14 years old yeah and yeah. what what did you put down for india i wrote something i don't know if i can do it here after all these years you know i traveled on top of a train in india you know this was because uh, when i was a little kid you know i saw many pictures and many people up uh, you know above the the train so this was a passion to do something like this you know it was really nice and i still have this 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 paper when i from i was 14 because the first time i said to someone i want to travel or I want to go abroad. I was four years old when I was a very little kid going out, out outside in the pool. And then a TV presenter just asked me, what do you want to do when you grow older? I said, I want to go to Japan. Why Japan? Because it's the farthest place a kid mind can ever imagine. You know, this is the thing. And from that point, I was just playing, right, you know, like um, drawing planes on the wall, uh, writing every time that I, please God help me to go ab abroad and travel all over the world. And I did it because once you have a dream, you have to protect it and you have to believe in your dream. From that point, you can't let anyone put his finger on your, in, in your face and tell you, you can't do this. You know, this but is people must have done that. People must have said, how will you get the money for starters? Absolutely. So how did you get it? You know, the first thing, the first one who said, put his finger in my face and said, you won't do something like this was my parents, was my mom. And I managed, you know, like I even, you know, my father, my, 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 my grandmother, the only one who was supporting me when I was a kid to begin dreaming and protect my dream was my grandfather. But after that, you know, why? My mom is saying, why? You have to collect the money you have to get married, to get bigger flat, you know, to make many things, you know, you have to be in some work or some job to be, you know, to get promoted and, you know, like to, to be a senior manager and stuff. But I left all this and I managed to continue my dream. So I put every penny I have in the beginning of my, my trip in 2007. I was just, you know, collecting money 
in the four years of my college in computer science and information systems. And then once I finished, I just began traveling. I put every single penny I have in my pocket. I sold, you know, like even in 2011, I sold my flat to continue my travels because I have a dream and I want to inspire the whole youth that once you have something, you have to protect it and you can do it. It's physical in, uni in the universe, you know. Nothing is impossible and you have to be unrealistic. So I managed to get money every penny I have. I, I have a very small car in Egypt and I don't want, you know, like to get another car, even if it's in my dream list to have like big, wonderful car. But, you know, like, you know, I have priorities to do first. And then I sometimes I worked a little bit abroad for a little time and the people, the managers know that I'm, you know, globing, you know, like shooting all over the world. So they, you know, give me good money in small time just to continue. And I'm willing, you know, I will never stop until I be in every country in the world. Even though, you know, like if I would be like an old guy, one day you will open the television and, and you will find an old guy who have 80 years old going on a stick and very, you know, like to put the flag and talk about his country in the last country in the world. This but is what I'm trying. But you surely won't need that long. And you probably have a plan in place and you have started getting sponsors now. Yeah. Uh, how, how is the sponsorship going now? To tell you the truth, you know, it's like, it's not like, you know, as people think, because if people think or hear about sponsoring, and this is the one thing of stereotyping, you know, and one thing about mind settings that I'm trying to break all over the world, is sponsoring means that everyone pays to me everything, and, you know, I'm staying in five stars hotels, and I'm traveling for free from a country to country, and it's very funny, you know, like just, you know, and very, uh, you know, it's, it's not that at all. You know, that's not your aim. Your aim is to go down and meet people. Absolutely. And carry because, a message. Yeah, absolutely. Because without the people, I'm not me. You know, but without you do need support at the end of the day, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Support from local governments. Uh, and you have got it in many cases. You yeah. have met many heads of states uh, in your travels. I believe in Brazil, uh, you had quite an experience. Yeah, for, for sure. Would you like to share that experience with us? For sure. I've met someone in Brazil who is very very modest very wise and he inspired me a lot mr. president Lula and I wish you know because I know that he's now you know like he have some uh, this, you know like the cancer in his throat and I hope and I'm willing to go again to Brazil and you know wish him to get well soon and meet him again because he inspired me a lot because you know for for sure everyone is watching us will know the history of this guy you know he made something and he had a dream and you know he he loved his country because the thing is from my travels as i told you now i have yeah i have the sponsorship of misty of foreign affairs they are trying to support me not sponsoring but no one give me any kind of money so Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Egypt is supporting my, my trips by, you know, by facilitating visas, by facilitating my, my uh, trips in some countries and stuff. But let me, let me ask you about who are the other people who have uh, inspired you along your journey so far? I'm getting inspired by everyone who succeeded in his life because life is risk. And I can accept failure, but I can't accept not trying. So I see like Walt Disney inspired me because this guy, for example, he was fired from his you know, job as a journalist because he's, they said that he don't have any original idea and he don't have any imagination and he's become Walt Disney, you know, like many, many people, Winston Churchill, you know, you'll find Ms. President Lula, you will find Michael Jordan, you'll find many, many people inspired me, even though the people who had very bad history also, they inspired me because they, they prevented me from doing something that they did, you know, because the thing is, you have to learn from history what you want exactly, what, what happened. But, but let's talk of the people who you've met. Yeah. Out of the people you've met, who are the ones that have inspired you? My grandfather, my father, Mr. President Lula, uh, Mrs. Cristina Fernandez, the president of Argentina, because she's a woman and, you know, like to be a president and to make, you know, you know the development she made in her country. Uh, uh, the one of one one of the people who really inspired me was the Pope Shenouda. You know for sure he died. You know I took his last signature on my flag. I'm traveling all over the world. He is very 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 wise person. And you know when he met me, he met me and he was very ill. Just to support the message of we are just one human and the the message of unity. Because Egypt, if the Muslims and the Christians they didn't unite together, it will be, you know, a disaster because we are just one and this is, un this is the unity. So he inspired me a lot by his talks. Uh, many, many other people, you know, like inspired me when, when I met, many ambassadors inspired me, many, 
many many people inspired me you know like by many ways so I can't and you are you are now making a documentary on your travels yes. and you're planning to uh, document everything in a book as well um, are you planning to bring it out phase wise or you're going to wait to the end and then bringing the, the entire works out at the beginning of my travels I was supposed to write a book for all the journey and then to make a documentary when I finish everything but while traveling, you realize that it's very, very huge. You and know, the world is dynamic. Things are changing. Exactly. What you saw in 2007... Uh, it's not the same now. It would not be the same now. So don't you think you may it's be time. dated? Yeah, I think it, it's time to begin writing my book. Maybe writing it in a way that I have to, to talk with many people to see the best way to write it because I want it to be from 7 to 77, you know, this type of books that even the child and his grandfather, they can read the same book and they get inspired. And the same thing I want to do to the documentary, but now I'm, I'm searching for, and I hope that a very good channel that will, you know, like make it and spread it to all the people and they have very good viewers that can learn from these documentaries because I want to open the eyes of the people that seeing is believing. You know, I'm going in the streets talking to people I don't know. I, d I never make an, you know, like a video with someone I know on the street. I don't know anyone. And it opened, you know, this smile opened the, the doors of heaven with everyone. So I have a documentary which is truly unique because no, nothing is prepared and nothing is fake. You know, this is normal. We walk in the streets, we make, we make videos with everyone we meet and everyone have a different story because everyone you see on the street have a different story that you can, that he shared with us on the videos. This is the unique thing about my travels and this is what I hope that will really break the racism and break the borders between the countries, not just between Egypt and India. No, I'm an ambassador and, they call, and the people and in the media told me that I'm the unusual ambassador of Egypt and the ambassador of humanity because, for example, I came to India, I went to Brazil, I went to Russia, I went to every place and I'm showing the people the reality. So when I go, for example, to other country and they say something about India, for example, that India is just you walk and you find the elephants in the streets or whatever, you know, you, the, the, you know they say. So I would be the ambassador of India in this point and I will say, I went to India, you can't see the videos on YouTube or whatever on the program and this is the truth, you know, this is India. It's so not about to, what you're saying. You're trying to... Uh, re-look at the image that the world has in many cases which is not uh, very close to reality in today's sense so stereotyping is what you're trying stereotyping. to stereotyping stereotyping is something fatal you know stereotyping can break something or can destroy something without even beginning it. you know just you know just if you if someone tell you something about another person and you're going to meet him. So if you just listen to, them, to him, you'll put a border, you put a barrier between you and the other guy, you know. This is not good, you know. You have to see, you have to talk, you have to react, and then you can see that more than 90% of the things they are, see, you know, they are said about a person or a country or a place or whatever is wrong. You have to see it, you know, because they, so, they say children see, children do. So you have to see and then you'll do. If you just hear, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, and then you find, you know, like your kid find you throwing something, so he will do it, you know, because seeing is believing. So now let's talk about your trip to India. When you started your, your journey, uh, you obviously had India on your mind and you had a certain perception of India. How is reality uh, when you see it today? In, in, in relation to what uh, you, you, you perceived India to be? To tell you the truth, India for me, from I was a little kid, it was a magnificent country. And I always hear stories and read and see, you know, like it's magic, you know, because India is very special. It's and unique, like, in, like Egypt, exactly for foreigners, you know, like Egypt and India is one of the top countries for everyone born in this life on this planet and one of the passions to go there. For me, India is magnificent. And when I come here, when I came to India, in neglecting, you know, the, the monkey bite I had in the first hour, you know, for me here in New Delhi. Uh, that was unusual, wasn't it? it? Absolutely. How did you manage to get bitten by a monkey? Uh, I was just walking. The first hour, I just came to the, to the embassy, put my stuff, and then I'm walking around the, the embassy, and I found, you know, like, we found some monkeys, so absolutely we want to do good video, you know, like, for people to see. So we were just giving them 
food and then I found a monkey on my back biting me in my back and that's it you know like I found myself in the hospital but I think from my own point of view this is a very good uh, experience this is new and this is unique you know how many people have you know like been never bitten in his life and then been by monkey this is I think for me it's something special and it will keep India always in a good thing in my mind it's not about anything bad you know I think it's really nice even um, if it hurts a little bit but it's uh, it's it's perfect I think India is amazing you know from the time I met Mr. Ambassador of India in Egypt and he gave me this complimentary visa for me and my cameraman you know I think Indians have many many details the same as Egyptians and this is why I deal with people in the street exactly as if they are Egyptians, you know. They, we have a similarity in many, many things, in, hum in, in sense of humor, in kindness, in pureness of the heart, and, you know, like, in trying to helping other people, in loving foreigners. We are very similar in many ways. And I think, you know, I do respect the Indians very much, you know, like, uh, it's amazing. So where all do you plan to go in India? What are the cities you plan to visit here? First day, as I told you, I was just, you know, I just arrived, bitten by a monkey, and then went to the hospital. Second day, even with my body hurt, I went to Agra to visit this majestical, you know, like Taj Mahal. It's amazing, you know, like it's not just even seeing Taj Mahal as people see, but I had some, a, guy, a guy that he showed me some magic stuff inside. Even, you know, the walls and, you know, it, it appears, you know, when you feel it, it's like four dimension. And when you go outside, you know, like you see it like eight ages i see i saw the the marbles you know coming from other countries and written you know you see it as a drawing but when you come you know near you find this drawings and it's not it's, sto it's stones and it's brightening i saw many things i went to i would go to jaipur i met mr governor of uh, of delhi yesterday and i will meet uh, the chief minister of of delhi uh, I've been to all the temples I see here in, in, in Delhi, the Sikh temple, and they, they yesterday, because I want to break the stereotyping, because in Egypt they have a common sort that Sikh and Muslims are very, you know, like it's, they are not friendly. But I found something really, really strange yesterday in the old Delhi, that the Sikh temple is exactly beside the Muslim mosque, and they are living together, no problem. And they even, they celebrated me that when I'm going inside the tea temple, they took me and showed me everything, even downstairs, you know, their kitchen and the stuff. And they were very nice people. And, you know, I went to Buddha temples here. I went to Hindu temples. I've been to uh, Sikh. I've been to Christians. I've been to every place here because this is my, I, 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 for sure, I, I, I visited the, the last place that Gandhi was assin assassinated and I met the, the manager of this place and I gave them the Egyptian flag, I gave him present from Egypt also because he had the same message as I do and I hope one day I will change something in the world as Gandhi did because he is, a, uh, that's the thing, you know, like he is a very, very high role model to me, you know, this, you know, I've been to many places here in India, the thing is India is exactly as I told you is in Egypt. When you go to Egypt, you can't remember everything you you know. Even if you are just staying three or four days, you can't remember everywhere you go. This is the thing. So where do you go from India? I'm What's going back to Egypt. To back to Egypt. Because I finished by this trip. This trip was called Finding India. From Japan, passing through Indonesia. So I've been all the way Japan, Korea, China, Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan, China, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, Malaysia. Singapore, Indonesia, and now India. I finished all Asia now. And in the last trip, I was going to the upper one, you know, like Russia and Kazakhstan and uh, Uzbekistan and stuff. So I, I made India very special, you know, because it's, this trip is called Finding India because India is a passion. You know, we were just from the beginning, and when we were in Japan, we are just saying to the people in Egypt, everyone is asking, when will you reach India? You know, because everyone in Egypt and everyone, even from Brazil, you know, Brazil, for example, they love Indians. You know, they always have tattoos from India stuff, you know. Everyone was asking, when will you go to India? Because it is magic. So, of these 93 countries, uh, which has been your most interesting experience? Of course, the Indian experience we talked about, but apart from that, what are the other interesting experiences that you've had? 
I think the Siberian adventure was great because I did it in Jan. It was negative 47 degrees Celsius in Siberia, taking the Trans-Siberian train and going through all the way from Moscow to the end of Vladivostok on the South Korean, North Korean uh, borders, going back, going through Mongolia, the, you know, like the weird country for Egyptians because Egyptians and many other Arabs, maybe Indians also have a concept about Mongolia, which is truly wrong. These people, you know, they think that, you know, they always think about Chengiz Khan and Hulakwa and stuff, but they don't know they're very, very pure people. They are very pure. When they know that I'm Egyptian, I, even my cameraman was very afraid, you know, to go inside Mongolia. Even their ambassador in Egypt, he asked me, why are you going to Mongolia? Because no one is going there, you know. But when I went there, the people was very kind, very lovely. Even I'm speaking Arabic and they are speaking Mongolian, but we are speaking human language. You got my point. And then they invited me for, you know, they told me the biggest respect we can, you know, we give to everyone, to anyone who come is getting horse meat and drinking horse milk. And they made it to me. So I was very delighted of this experience. Another experience when I was in South America, for example, South America is amazing, you know, for many people, Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, Chile, uh, Ecuador, going to Cuba, which is, you know, like I can, I, I can say from your, your program that everyone who is passionate to see something new, he must go to Cuba also. Of the countries that you have yet to visit, which are the ones you're really looking forward to and which would be your biggest challenge? I think every country is a challenge, but like secure stuff, I think Africa, it will be, Africa will be a great hit if I do it all over, you know, like, because it, it's a special case. I think Europe would be a challenge for me, going through all Europe, because it's not about anything, it's about people have been already, many people, millions of people have been to Europe, but I want to show the real thing, not just the touristic thing. So I want to show the people the other and real shape and face of Europe. This is the only thing that, you know, and Australia is okay. Australia and New Zealand, that's it, you know. So I finished the word. So I think it's, so. So it's the two continents that now you have to uh, touch upon, Africa and Europe. Yeah, and you know, like Australia, Fiji and New Zealand is okay. It's not a big deal, you know, like I finished the big one. Asia was magnificent. I had many, many experience in it, you know. Asia is, you know, when I just think about what I did in Asia, wow, it's, it's, it's You don't amazing. seem to be tiring at all. You seem to be more energetic with your trips. Where do you draw the energy from? I, I take my, you know, my energy, I take my smile, and I take my belief more and more in what I'm doing from the people's smile. Because I believe that my life will become better by making other people's life better. So as soon as they get people, when I'm giving presents all over, the, everywhere I go, you know, like in the streets and everywhere, I just give presents. You look upon yourself more as an explorer and a person uh, who has a message for humanity. Exactly. And that's why you, you, you draw energy from that. But somewhere down the line, do you plan to hang up your boots and get back to what you're specializing in, perhaps computers and computer science. Because at the end of the day, maybe this is a passion with you and this is a hobby, but you don't, you, you don't look upon it as a profession, do you? No, I think, I hope that I told you that, I hope that I will write a book about my travels in order to continue you now, like my, my, because I love this, you know, this is what I, I told you, you know, you can be smarter than me, you can be more intelligent than me, you can be more sexy than me, you can be whatever you can, you know, but when we come to traveling and exploring another country, there is two options, you're getting off first, or I w I'm gonna die, you know, like on it, this is the passion, this is what I'm trying, you know, to prove to even to my parents, or even to everyone who was against me in the beginning, and now, they are the one that they are respecting, you know, and raising hats for me. The, pe the same people at the beginning in 2007 were saying, what are you doing? You know, like, what are, what are you going to do? Why you're going, you know, you're paying your money just to give presents, give stuff and give people, you know, like, what, what, gonna, what you gonna, you know, because everyone, as you told me, everyone, every, as you know, wants to know what I will get back. Until now, I didn't get anything in return, you know, I'm just getting good memories with people, I'm getting people smiling and I'm getting that 
I made other people life better. This is making my own life better. This is what I want, but I need it to be more because that's why I'm, I'm t in talks now with the United Nations to be the, the ambassador of goodwill there. And I hope it will you know, be accepted. At the same time, you avoid getting involved in the politics and economics of a situation. How long will you be able to do that? Because at the end of the day, politics and economics form a very important part of human, inter human interaction. As, as I always say, I don't have any political or religious views. You know, I don't want to divide people. I want to unite every mankind. Well, we wish you luck in your travels. And thank you for sharing your views with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And we see you next week. Until then, goodbye.